Today we want to think about the nervous system and I want to introduce some basic ideas to start our understanding of about this amazing bodily system. And I remember when I was a student, and in fact very often I've had difficulty with the nervous system, it is a complicated system. And no matter how much you learn, there's always something else to learn. But let's start off at a fairly basic level, looking at the nerve cells themselves. And I want to start off with a motor neuron. So motor, motor means to do with movement, a neuron is a nerve cell, a neuron is an individual nerve cell. And if you're watching in the US, you don't put any on the end, whereas in England we do. So a motor neuron is an example of an individual nerve cell. Now you probably know that the nervous system is in two classifications, there's the brain and the spinal cord. That's the central nervous system. All the other nerve tissue in the body is the peripheral nervous system. And just to give you a bit of idea about how amazing this system is, in the brain there's 100,000 million neurons. That's 100 billion neurons. And they're all greatly interconnected each neuron in the brain making connections with between a thousand and ten thousand other neurons but as we'll see never actually touching them an amazingly complex system but let's start with this motor neuron and like all cells it's going to have a cell body with a nucleus a cytoplasm and a cell membrane it's just that the shapes a bit different so here we have the cell membrane and already we notice that the shape's a bit different so there's branches coming off short branches coming off and these divide into thinner branches before they terminate and there's quite a few of these like sprouting off the uh, sprouting off the neuron and they become thinner before they terminate projecting from the body the cell body. So we have these small branches. But the motor neuron, as well as having numerous small branches, there's more than this, I've just drawn a few. It's got one long branch projecting from it as well. So we'll have a long branch as well. And this long branch can be very long. For example, the sum of these branches go from your spinal cord all the way down to your toes, so they could easily be a metre long. And as we've said, this is the cell body here, this component, so it has a nucleus. And there are granules in the cytoplasm. They ha it has a granular appearance. A lot of these granules are actually rough endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is rough because it contains ribosomes involved in protein synthesis to produce the proteins that maintain the integrity of the cell in the cytoplasm. So it's a regular cell, just a bit of a strange shape. And at the end it usually branches out a bit as well into several branches and at the very end it tends to get wider just before it ends. So they are the components of a motor neuron. Now these small branches here are dendrites. Dendrites. Dendritic means tree-like. These are dendrites. So there'll be several short dendrites on a motor neuron. And this long one here, that's the axon. Now the motor neuron is what we call an excitable cell. It can generate electrical potential differences across its membrane. And in effect, it has electrical activity. And the electrical activity forms nerve impulses, carrying nerve impulses from one part of the body to another. 
And for the motor neuron, the main place it's carrying nerve impulses to is going to be a skeletal muscle, a muscle here, attached to bones of the skeleton that brings about movement. Now the dendrites, these short branches, a dendrite is defined as any nerve fibre carrying an impulse towards the nerve cell body. So these dendrites are taking nerve impulses towards the nerve cell body. And they're getting information from other nerve fibres which will be connecting with them via small junctions called synapses, which we'll look at later. But they're not actually touching these other nerve fibres, the small gaps. So electrical activity is arriving at the motor neuron cell body via these dendrites. So the short dendrites are numerous, carrying electrical information, neuronal nerve impulses towards the cell body. Whereas the axon is carrying nerve impulses away from the cell body. So the axon is carrying nerve impulses from the nerve cell body away out towards the periphery, towards a muscle. So we see that the information, the neuronal information, the information carried as nerve impulses, is being transmitted away from the central nervous system towards the periphery. So these are efferent, efferent fibres. This is an efferent system carrying information out. So an afferent neuron will carry information in towards the central nervous system, but the motor neurons are efferent, carrying information out from the central nervous system to the periphery to facilitate movement. Now this first part of the motor neuron here looks like a little hill. Now you have hills, big hills and mountains I suppose, and little hills are called hillocks. So that's the axon hillock, it's a small hill. It's the first part of the axon between the cell body and the axon. Now, of course, here we're at a microscopic scale. This is a single cell. And in a nerve, there can be thousands of individual nerve fibers. So for example, going into your hand, you have the ulnar nerve going into your hand there and the median nerve going into your hand in the middle and the ulnar nerve which is a relatively small nerve it only looks after these two fingers but that probably contains about 20,000 nerve fibers to facilitate the movement of the that part of the hand so if you have many nerve fibers all together in a nerve bundle can you see they need to be insulated because this is electrical activity so they're actually insulated and there are specialized cells that insulate the nerve fibers. And these are cells and what they do is they wrap around the nerve fibers. They are individual cells with a nucleus, membrane, cytoplasm and these are the Schwann cells. And the Schwann cells produce this fatty material, myelin. And the myelin is fatty and it's white. That's why if you see nerve fibres in the surgical or post-mortem situation, they look white because of the myelin sheath. So myelin is the fatty insulating material produced by the Schwann cells. The Schwann cells are individual cells that wrap around the axon of the motor neuron and each swan cell in reality is only about a millimetre long it's about a millimetre which is quite big for a cell but they're about a millimetre long so if you've got a long length of nerve fibre you can see there's going to be hundreds of swan cells wrapping around 
So actually there'd be hundreds or a thousand or two, potentially, Schwann cells wrapping around the nerve fiber, but all individual cells with their own cytoplasm nucleus cell membrane producing this fatty myelin. And they wrap around. So a Schwann cell could actually wrap around many tens of times around about the axon, no, axonal nerve fibre, the axon. So even though you've only got one nerve cell, that's supported by hundreds of other non-nerve cells, in this case Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system. In the central nervous system it's different, the myelin is produced by another type of cell called a called an oligodendrocyte, an oligodendrocyte is the cell that forms the myelin sheath in the central nervous system and that's actually the cell that's uh, damaged by uh, multiple sclerosis, the oligodendrocytes. So we see that this myelin sheath made up by these layers of the Schwann cells are going to insulate the nerve fibre. They also protect it against damage. They also nourish it. And if there's any damage to the nerve fibre, the Schwann cells are instrumental in facilitating healing of the nerve fibre. But they do something else as well. Now, an electrical nerve impulse is a depolarization. It's a reversal of the polarity inside the nerve fibre. And this spreads down the axon as a wave of depolarization. Now that can spread down the whole length of the axon, but that's a relatively slow process. That will give you transmission rates of maybe one to two meters per second, which is not bad, but it's not as fast as we'd like. So the presence of these <coughs> swan cells forming the myelin sheath, what it means is the nerve impulse can actually move from one node to the next, like this. The nerve impulse can go choo, 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 like a stone skimming across the water. It doesn't need to go down the whole length. The nerve impulse can actually bounce from one node to the next. So these little gaps here between the individual Schwann cells are very important and they're called the neurofibral nodes. The neurofibral nodes, or in the old days we used to call them the nodes of, some people do, still do call them the nodes of Rambia after some guy that discovered them. So the neurofibral nodes is the correct term the neurofibral nodes of Rambia. But they're very important because they greatly speed up the rate of neuronal transmission. And this fast bouncing transmission is called saltatory transmission. So saltatory transmission. And in type of nerve fibers called amyelinated nerve fibers, type A, myelinated nerve fibers. The rate of transmission in some neurons can be 50 meters per second, in others it can be 100 meters per second, and some have even been timed up to about 130 meters per second. So very rapid neuronal nerve transmission. This wave of depolarization bouncing rather than going down the whole thing as a wave. But still the nerve impulse is still traveling along the axon away from the nerve cell body. Now coming towards this end, we notice that the motor neuron branches out and gets wider at the end. Now these are called the motor end bulbs. The motor end bulbs. Some people call them different things, but we'll call them motor end bulbs today. So there's motor end bulbs there. And these motor end bulbs actually contain chemical transmitter substances. 
because as you'll see, the motor end bulbs, the terminal po portion of the motor neuron, doesn't actually touch the skeletal muscle. There's this microscopic synaptic gap. So what happens is, when the motor impulse, the neuronal impulse arrives here in electrical form, going down towards the muscle, that stimulates the release of this chemical transmitter. And that chemical transmitter goes into the gap between the motor end bulbs, the terminal parts of the motor neuron, and the muscle into the synaptic gap. The gap is very, very small, so it diffuses quickly. And then this transmitter chemical is called acetylcholine, is the chemical transmitter. This acetylcholine arrives at the motor end plates on the muscle, and the specialised receptor sites on the surface of the muscle to receive this acetylcholine. And when enough acetylcholine arrives, that causes the muscle cells to depolarise because the muscle cells are also excitable. There's only two types of excitable cells capable of electrical activity in the body, the nerve cells and the muscle cells. So the acetylcholine arrives, that causes depolarization of the skeletal muscle cells. And when the skeletal muscle cells depolarize, the muscle will contract and we will have motor activity. So that's the essence of the motor neuron. The dendrites taking information in, the cell body, the axon protected by the myelin sheath made up of the Schwann cells, the motor end bulbs producing the chemical transmitter going across to depolarize the muscle to cause contraction of the muscle itself. So that's the motor neuron in basic outline. We could say more, there's some motor neurons in the brain that go down the spinal cord. There's other motor neurons that go from the spinal cord out to the periphery. This one really is the one that goes from the spinal cord out to the periphery. We could mention some diseases. In motor neuron disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, these motor neurons simply start dying and the patient becomes paralyzed. Or we could mention another disease, Mycenae gravis, which is a disease of these neuromuscular junctions. We can call that whole thing the neuromuscular junction. The neuromuscular junction between the nerves and the muscle. Mycenae gravis. This is the area that's also affected by muscle relaxing drugs that we use a lot in intensive care and anaesthesia to cause paralysis in the skeletal muscle of our patients. Or we could think about spinal cord injuries where these neurons can be transected in the spinal cord leading to permanent paralysis. So lots of clinical applications that you're going to come across based on these this essential anatomy and physiology of the motor neuron.